public key cryptography. What is it and how could it possibly work? Uh, that will be this video and the next video will try to give a little emotional motivation of, of that, of how it can work. Okay, so uh, I'll mention that public key cryptography is kind of the foundation of commerce on the web. Okay, which is the preeminent use of the web these days, it seems. You, you're, you find out information, but you're also exchanging money. You're buying things. So when I go to Amazon.com, uh, I want to give them my credit card number, and I want there to be a little lock icon up in the corner of my browser saying, hey, this is a secure transmission. Eavesdroppers aren't getting a hold of my credit card number. Um, I'm only giving it to Amazon. Uh, and, you know, inherently the web is not like that. The web is just, um, it's like sending postcards. Every message is a postcard that goes through the mail. And every mail carrier along the way, uh, and it's a volunteer mail carrier system, uh, can look at that postcard and see whatever is written on it. I don't want my credit card number to be readable by all the people between here and Seattle or wherever Amazon is headquartered. Um, rather, wherever their server happens to be. Okay, so um, <clears throat> secrets in general have been around a long time. I think, you know, humans were invented and then secrets were invented about uh, 30 seconds later. So uh, you've probably seen ways of keeping secrets. Uh, maybe you've seen the, heard about a Caesar cipher uh, named after Julius Caesar because he used it, not invented it. Um, and wrote, that's like where you just maybe shift all the letters of, Every letter in your message, you just shift it a few letters down. Uh, a becomes D, uh, B becomes E, C becomes F. Okay, And then to decrypt it, you just do the same thing in reverse. Uh, and you've probably seen newspaper puzzles where they have just a general permutation of the alphabet. They're like, uh, hey, here's how I encrypt my message. A will become L, and B is going to be X, and C is going to be A. Um, and they just sort of say, scramble the letters in that way give you the encrypted text, and then your your morning newspaper puzzle is to sit down, given just the encrypted text, can you figure out what the original message was? Can't be that secure of a system if this is a puzzle for people's amusement in the daily newspaper. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, ciphers have been around. Um, and in general, the way ciphers work is you prearrange with somebody else to have a key. So you tell somebody, hey, here's my message, and I'm going to be using a Caesar cipher with a shift of three. Or I'm going to be using a one of these permutation uh, ciphers, and here's, here's the key. A goes to L, B goes to X. Um, and then that way the receiver can simply undo what they get. Um, and there's many, many clever schemes that are not would not occur in a uh, newspaper puzzle in the morning. Um, there are entire government agencies built up uh, to try to decipher a ciphered message. Um, and I'm just going to mention a couple of, uh, I think, a notable mention. Uh, it's going to be one-time pad. As a motivation, I'm going to talk about a book cipher. This is around a while. Uh, the prearranged key is going to be a, a common book that's in print. It's going to be like a certain edition of you know, um, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, okay? And I'm going to send you a message, and here's what the message will be. It's going to be, uh, the key will actually be like page 93 of, of that particular book. Um, and I'll give you, I'll send you a message, and it'll be a bunch of numbers. Somebody might intercept it, but I just see a bunch of numbers, I have no idea what I'm talking about. The recipient says, hey, I'm going to go to page 93 of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley of a certain edition, a certain printing, and the numbers correspond to which word of the page it is, okay? So here's an example. Um, I might go ahead and uh, have a um, cipher text of 15, 4, 12, 52, 7. And the text that it's coming from, this is uh, from the Declaration of Independence, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary, blah, blah, blah. Read it. So it's, a, it's a good quote. And pause and read that. But, uh, or reread the Declaration of Independence. Just that first paragraph is well phrased. Anyway, where are we? Um, yeah, so, hey, go to word 15, go to word 4, go to word 12, go to word 52, go to word 7. That's going to be my message. And I might say, hey, take the uh, the first letter of each of those words, and I'll run decrypt, and off in the corner of my screen here, it comes back, and it says that, uh, oops, 
There we are. Ooh, a bad connection. Decode is the, that's what that secret message is. Uh, in fact, I can even, if I want to be a little bit faster to send a message and my secret book has a bunch of a rich, a rich uh, variety of words that have, I could piece them together to make all my messages, I could do something like, hey, use the entire word. Okay, and when I go and decrypt that, I'll get, um, you know, word number four is when in the course. So the second mes message, letter of my message is course. In fact, my message might be dissolve course one decent events. Not quite as elegant, eloquent as the original Declaration of Independence. But. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting cipher. Again, there's a prearranged key. The recipient needs to know what page of what book or what, what printing of what book. Um, people intercept it. It's almost impossible to break unless you know that. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing. And I'm going to use that as a segue to just talk about a one-time pad. A one-time pad says, hey, and I can view my message as a bunch of ones and zeros. Okay, uh, so I have an original message I want to send somebody, and here's what I'll do. I'm going to change some of the ones to zeros, or vice versa. Uh, I'm going to toggle some of the bits of the message, but not all of them, just some of them. Which ones do I toggle? I might toggle the first and the seventh, seventh and eighth and nineteenth and twenty-first and and so on. Um, I'll toggle about half of them, and you know when I do that, about is anybody getting the enciphered version is going to it's going to look like noise. It's going to look like random bits, really. Um, but if the recipient can go ahead and un can flip back exactly the bits I flipped, they'll recover the exact message. Okay. So if my one-time pad is going to be a bunch of ones and zeros telling me, hey, you know, one zero zero one might be flip the first bit, but not the second or third bits, but do flip the fourth bit. Um, and so if I and my recipient both have a copy of that same set of ones and zeros, and it's kind of a random set of ones and zeros, that will randomly encrypt any message uh, and is really unbreakable as long as the uh, interceptor doesn't get a hold of that one-time pad. So that's kind of a, a neat idea as something that becomes statistically unbreakable. Okay, um, in real life, you focus your attacks on getting a hold of that one-time pad, right? Uh, and do human engineering and phishing, send an email saying, hey, I'm your boss, send me a copy of that one-time pad, I lost it, thanks. Yeah, anyway, okay. All these ciphers, all these traditional ciphers have always required pre-arrangement between the sender and the receiver, okay? Uh, now, let's get back to Amazon. Uh, if I can pre-arrange some sort of key between me and Amazon, we'd be okay, but how do I arrange that? I send them an email? Well, the email is insecure, right? I guess I could travel. If, if I'm willing to travel out to Washington State or wherever um, and talk with them in person and set up a uh, a key, then I could have a, a secure way to talk with Amazon. But that's kind of tedious for me to go to not just Amazon, but every other company on the web that I do business with and all the new companies that come up. Okay, that becomes infeasible. Uh, you need a way, we want a way to do this that uh, doesn't require pre-arranging anything. And this just sort of sounds impossible. Here's what I want to do. I want to talk with you and there's a bunch of other people watching this video and I want to send a message just to you that nobody else, even though everybody else will overhear our conversation, I imagine we could talk both ways, um, everybody could overhear our conversation, but only you get my can understand the message that I give you, even though everybody's overhearing us. And that including an initial setup of a key. And that just sounds impossible. But that's what public key systems do. And it's pretty amazing, okay? I mean, it's just, wow. Um, Amazing that it's even possible. So, uh, by the way, just a little notation here. I'm going to go ahead and say that, hey, if you, if I go ahead and have a message and a key, I'm going to think of these as functions, a function E. E is going to take in my message and the key and give me back a resulting, the cipher text. Okay. And then if somebody else has the cipher text and the key, they can run another function, the decryption function, and get back my original message. Okay. So that's the traditional system of, of cipher systems in the path. There's a prearranged key, and we agree on what the encryption and decryption methods will be. Um, public key cryptography came about in the 1970s, 
And even though cryptography has been around for literally thousands of years, uh, people trying to encode and decode and, um, and cipher and decipher, decrypt messages, uh, in the 1970s, this, the whole world changed, okay? Some clever people came up with the idea of public key cryptography, okay? And you can go and look at the Wikipedia article on public key cryptography. It's quite good. Um, I'm just going to give a very brief overview. Um, and again, the whole, the real idea is that it doesn't require prearrangement. That's the, tr the world-changing point of view. Um, and the way it's going to work is that the person receiving the message is going to have a public key and a private key. The private key, they won't tell anybody. The public key, they're going to advertise. They're going to put it on their web page or take out an article in the newspaper saying, an ad in the newspaper, hey, if you want to send me a message, here's the system to use, and here's my public key. Okay. <clears throat> and yeah, it's going to be published, public to everybody in the world. Okay. Um, public keys are usually credited to Diffie and Hellman. In 1976, they published a way of using, of, of doing this. A very widely used algorithm is RSA. Uh, Rivest Shamir Edelman uh, came up a, a year later, uh, a, a way of doing this. Uh, it turns out, and I didn't know this until I was reading the Wikipedia article to make this video, uh, these things had all been done a few years before uh, by military intelligence, by British intelligence in particular. Some very clever British mathematicians uh, had come up with these same ideas. The ideas were in the air. People were doing academic research on this area except they didn't know that, hey, we're coming up with a public key crypto system. That, you know, uh, they didn't quite phrase it like that. But, uh, yeah, so, anyway, uh, that's the idea of a public key system. Uh, I'm going to have a public key that I publish. People are going to take my public key, encrypt a message, uh, and da -da -da, so they'll encrypt it using a public key, I'm going to go ahead and take this, and then they're going to email me the ciphertext that, again, might be overheard by everybody. Um, I'm going to grab the ciphertext, but the only way to undo the ciphertext, the only feasible way, is to use my private key. Okay? And that's how I'm going to decrypt it. So, and I'm the only one that knows my private key. So it's kind of weird. The sender doesn't know my private key. Okay? Uh, they just know what everybody else in the world knows, my public key. They go to my webpage, grab my public key, and can send me a message, but it will be a private message, okay? So in the next video, I'm going to go and give a sort of an emotional example of how that's even conceivably possible, okay? Although it won't be a real secure public key system.